Hi guys! Today's lesson is going to be on interval notation. This should be the very first entry in your logbook. What is interval notation? Well, first of all, let's go back and talk about some things that you're already uh, familiar with. You are familiar with expressing intervals algebraically like this with inequality symbols. X is less than 3 negative 5 is less than or equal to x and x is less than 8. You could also say that x is between negative 5 and 8 including negative 5 but not including 8. And over here x is greater than or equal to 4. You're also familiar with number line representations of these inequalities. Um, because this is strictly less than, not less than or equal to, we have an open circle on the 3 and we're shading to the left because the numbers that are less than 3 are to the left. For this one, because x is between negative 5 and 8, but we include negative 5, so there's a closed circle there, but we do not include the 8, so there's an open circle there. And for the last one, x is greater than or equal to 4, we have a closed circle because we are equal to the 4 right here. Closed circle because of the equal. And we're shading to the right because the numbers that are greater than 4 are to the right of 4. There is another way to represent these intervals that we're talking about, and that's what interval notation is. So, for interval notation, we're going to start by looking at the number line representations. If you see an open circle, you're going to replace it with a parenthesis. Open circle, parenthesis are equivalent. The parenthesis that opens it is always on the left and the parenthesis that closes the interval is always on the right. If you see a solid circle then you are going to replace it with a square bracket. A closed circle equals or is equivalent to a square bra bracket. The square bracket that opens up the interval always goes on the left, and the square bracket that closes the interval always goes on the right. Okay, we can combine these two symbols because if we have this representation on the number line, we're going to replace the closed circle with a square bracket and replace the open circle with a parenthesis. Notice the parentheses facing this way is the one that always goes on the right. Now, we can extend this idea to represent our interval very compactly. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the number line. Then we're going to put the lowest value of the interval, the negative 5, is going to go on the left. We're going to put the highest value in the interval, the 8, and it's going to go on the right. We're going to separate the two of them with a comma and then we're going to use our square bracket if the endpoint is included and our open bracket, I'm sorry, our parentheses, not an open bracket, our parentheses if the endpoint is not included. This is interval notation and it means the same thing as negative 5 is less than or equal to x and x is less than 8. It's just a shorthand way to write it. Mathematicians are very mm, not lazy, but we like to use our time wisely and we don't like to do more work than we need to do. So we try to do things very succinctly if possible. So what if there is no end point like x is less than 3? It's all the values that are less than 3 or x is greater than or equal to 4. All the values that are greater than 4. Let's look at it. Here is the representation graphically for x is less than 3. Well, we're going to also look at the representation of x is greater than or equal to 4. 
we're still going to follow those same steps that we followed on the previous example. The first thing we're going to do is notice that when we have um, an arrow that continues and there's no endpoint in sight and it goes to the left, that's negative infinity. So we're going to consider the endpoint to the left, if there's no stopping place, negative infinity. Then we're going to look at the right side of the number line. If that number line keeps going on and on and on to the right, we're going to call that infinity. The next thing we're going to do is follow our four steps. We're going to take our left endpoint, in this case because it continues to the left, the left endpoint is negative infinity. We're going to take the right endpoint, which happens to be 3. We're going to separate them with a comma. We always, always, always use an, a, an, a parentheses on infinity or negative infinity. And because this side has a parenthesis, we're going to also include that here. So this is the interval notation for all of the numbers that are less than 3. Now let's look at x is greater than or equal to 4. We're going to do exactly the same thing. Looking at this one, we see we have a left endpoint of 4, so we'll write that down. Looking at the right endpoint, there really is no right endpoint. It's going to go on and on and on forever, so we're going to use the right symbol of infinity. infinity. Always use your closed bracket if it's an equal to sign here, so closed bracket with the 4, and always use a parenthesis with infinity or negative infinity. Okay, Always use a parenthesis with infinity. It looks like this if you have if you are looking at no left endpoint and it looks like this if you're looking at no right endpoint or right boundary. Okay, what I'd like for you to do at this point is I'd like for you to pause this video and I'd like for you to try these five, see what you can do with them, uh, write them down in your logbook with pencil so that you can correct them if they are incorrect when you check it with the next slide. All right, pause the video, try these five before you look at the answers. Okay, here are the answers. Check your work, make sure they're correct. If they're not, and you can't figure out how to get these answers, please highlight this or put a question mark beside it so that tomorrow in class you can ask about these.